Megan here with a review of How To Foundation Paper Piece. This is the block we are going to be creating today and this is the foundation paper that we are going to use to create it. Um, to get started, I set my machine on a basting stitch for the first, to attach the first piece and I've laid out all my pieces over here in the order I'm going to attach them. This helps me to not get confused. So, we're going to attach the first piece to our foundation paper. And if you remember, the first piece is attached differently than the rest of the pieces. The first piece we attach BBB. We baste back to back. We're going to baste the back of our fabric to the back of our foundation paper. Um, and if you, you can use regular copy paper, but if you use foundation paper piecing paper or Ricky Tim's Stable Stuff Poly, you can actually see through the material, so that the paper, so that you can see whether or not your fabric is laying on there the way you want it to. So this is the first piece and it goes in right here in the one labeled number one. It tells you on here color three, which color three is bright orange. So I have my first piece laid on here, the back of my piece, the back of my paper is to the back of my fabric. I'm going to stitch from the paper side. I always stitch with the paper side up. And I'm going to baste down the middle of the piece. I'm not going to sew on any lines. That's another thing that makes the first piece different. So I'm just gonna go ahead and baste down the middle. My stitch length is at 3.0. Um, you can set it as high as 3.5 for a basting stitch. I like 3.0 because any bigger and my fabric starts to wrinkle. We will take this basting out when we take the paper out of our project. In this case, we won't take the paper out until we get the whole quilt sewn together. So that basting is gonna stay in there. If it bothers you, you can take it out as soon as um, you've got another piece attached. The only reason we've done this is to hold the first piece on there. I find it very hard to, um, to attach, to hold this piece on and attach the next piece while I'm still holding this one on. So now we're going to start with our method which is fold, cut, flip, stitch. We're going to lay this down with our fabric, our paper facing up. We're going to take the add a quarter ruler and we're going to lay it upside down on the line between piece one and piece two. If we lay this upside down, this side of the ruler is tapered and it makes it very easy to get a nice sharp fold. So now we're gonna fold our paper back, hence the name of the first step, fold. And I'm gonna give this a nice good, um, really tight fold. And then we're going to flip our ruler over the lip of the add a quarter ruler is gonna slide right up against the fold in our paper. And I'm going to cut away any fabric that's beyond this ruler. If there was fabric up here, I would go ahead and cut it away. You're gonna take your rotary cutter and just run it the length of your ruler, cutting away any fabric that's extra. So that's cut. So we've done fold and cut. Now we're going to flip. We're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take our next piece of fabric and we're going to line it up so that our raw edges are together. Okay, the raw edges of this dark blue piece are lined up exactly with the raw edges of our orange piece. While the paper is flipped back, if we check, we can see the outline of piece two, which is right here. It might be hard to see on the video, but this is the outline of piece two. We want our fabric to extend beyond the outline of piece two on all sides. So now we can see it's all the way over here. I'm gonna slide it down just a little bit more. So now we've got extra blue fabric extending beyond all the, the outline of the entire piece two. So now we flip this fabric back and we go back to the sewing machine and we're going to put it under our needle here. We're gonna start stitching. Bef this is the line that we need to sew on. We're gonna start stitching out here and we're gonna stitch onto that line. Because we are not 
um, back stitching anywhere. We want to make sure that we sew over the our seam our seams to lock them in place. So we actually want to start beyond our seam so we know when we sew on this line later on, we will lock this seam into place. I'm noticing as I'm sitting here that my fabric has moved. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out and double check. And sure enough, look at my piece down here is not lined up with my raw edges and it's not lined up over here either. Okay, so I'm going to fix that because it's very hard to rip out foundation paper piecing. We still will do it, but it's hard to do. And I just moved it again. There we go. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my presser foot down and sink my needle so everything stops moving. And then I'm going to adjust my stitch length. Your stitch length for normal piecing is 1.8. Here, I'm going to take it down to 1.2 or 3. Um, some people sew at 1.5. We want to perforate the paper a lot to make the paper easier to remove later on. So I'm just going to stitch onto my line. And when I get to the end, I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches past it. And then I'm going to cut my threads. And take my piece out. So that was fold, cut, flip and stitch. And now I'm going to pull my piece, I'm going to pull my fabric back and I'm going to check. And sure enough, it's beyond everything, all the outline of piece two. And so now I press. You want to use a dry iron. You don't want there to be any steam coming out of your iron with this because that can create ink transfer or toner transfer if you've used if you've used um, a laser printer to print your pieces you can get toner transfer from the steam and if you've used an inkjet printer it can transfer the water soluble ink so I've got two pieces done so now I'm just gonna keep going repeating my process fold cut flip stitch When I go to attach piece three, you're going to notice this little stitching line is here and it can make it hard to fold on the line. So I take my seam ripper, I'm not going to rip any stitches. I put it on my stitch line and I'm going to fold my paper back and it's going to rip a little bit and that's okay because now I'll get a nice crisp fold, which is what I want. So fold, check, yep. I'm going to add, um, line up my lip of my ruler with the fold on my paper and I'm going to cut. Now I'm going to grab piece three. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to line up piece three and this is the hardest part. And then I'm going to flip it back over and check to make sure that the outline of piece three is completely covered with my fabric and it is not. So I'm gonna scoot it down. And now the entire outline of piece three is covered. So I'm gonna lay it on my sewing machine and flip so I don't have to move too much here. So now I'm gonna stitch from just beyond my line, I'm going to stitch onto my line with a stitch length of 1.2 or 3. I'm going to stitch two or three stitches beyond. Cut my threads. And now if I'm getting some, I don't want a bunch of threads on this side making a mess or on the other side. Pull it back. I've got a really great point there, but let's make sure I am, and I am beyond all of the outlines of piece three. More than that, with piece three, it's on one on the edge, and this is the, this space right here is the seam allowance for the whole block, so I want to make sure that that's covered as well, and it is. 
So now we press with a dry iron. Press it back. Okay, and now we're going to go on to piece four. Piece four does not attach to piece three. Piece four is over here. So that's okay, but a lot of times the question becomes, what line do I stitch on? Well, let's think that through. If we stitched piece four, if we stitched on this line, piece six isn't there, so there's nothing to attach piece four to. Piece two is already here, so we're going to stitch on the line between piece four and piece two. So I'm going to loosen up that seam that's there from the paper. I'm going to fold on my line. I'm going to cut away anything beyond my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to flip back and forth a whole bunch to attach my next piece to lay it where I think it needs to be. And now this one's tricky because I can't see because there's already fabric in the way. So I've got two options. One is I can fold this back and see, and I can see right here that piece four is way down here and my fabric is way up here. So I've got to move it down. And then I can sort of eyeball a quarter inch seam allowance to fold it back and make sure. but it looks good. So now that was flip. Now I'm going to stitch on the line between piece two and piece four. So onto my line. And you can see I'm going to sew over this seam allowance right here, which will lock that into place and then I'm gonna stitch two or three stitches beyond my line and check. And I am covered. I covered my piece four, okay? If I had a problem and I needed to tear out a seam, which happens, um, I, if I had perforated my foundation paper a lot, if this side, if it was gonna rip out, all I would do would be to put a piece of scotch tape right on the seam, and then I would rip from this side and rip it out, okay, to detach it. I don't have to do that right now, thank goodness. So now I'm gonna add piece five. I'm gonna make sure this is all laying flat on my table or I will end up with a huge problem. Loosen this from the paper and fold back on the line. Cut away everything extra hanging beyond the ruler. I got a lot of blue and a tiny bit of orange. Now I'm going to attach piece five, which is this nice big piece. And I can see that this is piece five over here. This is the outline. So I'm covered. And now I'm going to stitch. Did all my flipping. big pieces on there. So I'm going to press it. I always press this way so that my allows my stitches to shrink up. I've always been told to press as you sew, which is what that just was, and now I'm pressing it open. 
So now I'm on to piece six, which is over here. It looks like a teepee. It does look like a teepee. Look. <laughs> and you'll notice I've got a blank here, and you might wonder if that's okay. Well, here's the answer. If it is beyond this line, it's fine. And you can see, I just fold it back on that line that my fabric, when I fold that away, I don't have that's just extra paper. I never cut my initial, I always cut beyond my outside seam allowance um, because when we're done, we're gonna trim up on that line. So I just give myself some wiggle room. Loosen up any stitch lines that are in the way. Fold on my line. And you can see as you move on, you get more and more fabric to cut away. Anything beyond the ruler is fine to remove. This one goes edge to edge. Whoops, I shouldn't have folded that back. So I can show you. This is my outline, so I'm okay. So I'm gonna stitch on the line. Which line are you stitching on? I'm stitching on the line between piece four and piece six. Piece four is already there, so I know I have to stitch on that line. Piece eight isn't there yet, so I couldn't stitch there. There'd be nothing to hold the fabric together. I also, these points that I'm getting now, this is why you wanna make sure that you don't have a bunch of extra threads because you wanna be trimming these away as you go because um, if you, you'll see this next one, I'm gonna attach piece seven over here. These threads are very likely to get tangled into your other seam allowances, your other seams, and when that happens, then you've got bunches, and in a place like this where you've got three or four pieces coming together, any extra thread in there is gonna make the seam even thicker. So now we press this one back. And what I'm trying to avoid is I want to be pressed right on my seam, my seam line because if it does this, if it bubbles, then when you get to quilting later on, you get, you'll have a big bubble in your project. All right, we're gonna attach piece seven. We're gonna use the line between piece five and piece seven. So fold, flip your ruler over and cut. Flip to add your piece of fabric. Make sure covering you are. So fold, cut, flip. Now we're going to flip the paper back and stitch. Not sure what line I thought I was going to sew on there. Okay, now as I'm sewing I can see that this piece fell down here underneath this piece is flopping. A lot of times when that happens, it gets out of alignment. So I'm gonna make sure that my raw edges are together still down at the bottom. Because otherwise, you get done and you look and you've got a nasty surprise. Your fabric is sewn in the wrong place and it doesn't cover your whole piece.
Looks pretty good. We've got another great point at the top there. The teepee look is going away and now we're seeing more of an arrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, we just have two pieces left. We're going to attach piece eight first. Fold. Okay, now, I think we're going to have an issue here. What do you do if you get here and there's nothing to cut away? You have to look at it. And this is just a tiny bit short. There are some, some this is a personal preference. You can rip it off and scoot it out. It looks like my piece got misaligned right here. But this is almost a quarter of an inch, and there are actually some people who foundation paper piece with an eighth inch seam allowance, which isn't my personal preference. But I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. But that's what happened. I'm going to be aware, because i got to make three more of these, that next time i got to be careful when I get to these long pieces so that my seams stay completely lined up. And again, we can't see, but we can feel. This is the corner, and I can feel with my thumb. I've definitely got more than enough room there. Okay, so now we're going to sew this one on. And now we want it to come beyond our outside line, and it does. So we're going to press that one as we sewed, and then out. Okay, and then last time, fold, cut, flip, stitch, and press. Fold. This one turned out better. Cut, flip, make sure we're lined up here, yep, and stitch. And I sewed it in the wrong place. See? Sometimes even our best laid plans, I've got a big old hole right here, which we can't have. So, to rip out foundation paper piecing, if you've used copy paper, go and get yourself a piece of scotch tape and, and put it right here on this line, okay? Because it's going to rip apart. I find the easiest way to rip is between the two layers of fabric. It's still hard because you've got a tiny stitch length. But you can, once you get going, you can pull your fabric back a little bit and then you can get in there and get that stitch. So, you can pull a little bit and you can usually pull out a couple of stitches at a time. And this isn't as terrible as you think it's going to be.
It's also the advantage to not back stitching. It's a little bit easier to pull out at the beginning and the end. And then once we have this piece ripped off, I am going to press this piece I ripped off in case there's any distortion from ripping, this will shrink it back up. You could use the other edge. You can also use the other edge. That's a very good point. You can also toss the whole piece and start over, which is what some people prefer to do, but I, it's on, we're on the last piece. I think that's a little unnecessary. Go ahead and pull this out too because my thread is really not blending in with my piece. So pull this out. And then okay. Start over and line up better. Turn it around. Every time I'm doing this now and then I think now I'll probably shift, I'll overcompensate the other way and then I end up with another, with a hole at the other end. Okay. So that seems better. We've got it here and here. So flip. This that I'm using right now is Ricky Tim's Stable Stuff Poly, and this stuff, it takes the ripping really well. It doesn't, you can rip once without having to get the scotch tape out and fix it. Um, hopefully you don't have to rip twice, I usually don't, but you never know. I don't know how it would handle that. There we go, much better. So now, We press, and then we are going to trim this piece up. Okay, now we're going to trim on this outside line, okay? This, this inside line is the line we would stitch on to attach the pieces to one another. So we've got to line up on this outside line, and you can use your add a quarter ruler or you can use a regular rotary cutter ruler. And we're just going to go ahead and trim on the outside line. And then, depending on your project, you're either going to, if you're, this quilt, this is the Graphic Jam quilt um, by Sassafras Lane Designs. This quilt, we would be done. We wouldn't touch this. We would put it away until all of our blocks are done. Um, we would just put this aside. If you are doing something else, there are a lot of other types of foundation paper piecing projects where you would now attach your foundation papers together. And if you are doing a project like that, you're gonna sew on the line and attach your pieces together. But like I said, this block, this quilt is made um, in a series of, I think they're six and a half inch blocks. So we're gonna leave these separate and we're gonna come back when we're all done with all of our quilt blocks and sew them together in rows, okay? But that is a review of the fold, cut, flip, stitch, hand press method of foundation paper piecing. If you guys have any trouble, just call the shop or send us an email and we'll be happy to help. Good luck.